headaches. Man discovers brain fluid leaking out of his ear. Liquid oozing from your orifices is not always good. And what you assume is mucus or water from the shower might turn out to be something more terrifying. 53-year-old Mark Hoffman says he always woke up in the morning to find his pillow soaking wet and one ear leaking a clear fluid. His weird problem persisted, but it would be another 10 years before a doctor figured out the cause of his mysterious ailment. Hoffman was diagnosed with a spontaneous cerebrospinal fluid leak, in which a hole in the skull bone and membrane, or dura, leaks fluid into either the ear or nose. Incidents of the condition have increased in the past decade, something doctors say might have to do with obesity and sleep apnea. The leaks can cause headaches, vision changes, or hearing loss. Patients are also more likely to develop meningitis, a potentially fatal infection in the lining of the brain. Cerebrospinal fluid leaks are often treated with a surgical procedure, in which bone and tissue are grafted to the holes in the skull and in the dura. Hoffman has since had the surgery, and although he still suffers hearing loss, he feels better, and at least no more brain juice is seeping out of his ear. Study finds brain disease in 96% of former NFL players tested. Many young athletes dream of playing in the NFL, but what most of them don't take into consideration is the risk of brain disease. A study by the Department of Veteran Affairs and Boston University found that 87 out of 91 former NFL players tested suffered from a brain disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. CTE is a brain disease that researchers believe is caused by repetitive head trauma. Brain scans can detect signs of CTE, but it can only be confirmed posthumously. The disease causes a protein called tau to form around blood vessels in the frontal lobe. During stage 2, sufferers may experience rage, impulsivity, or depression. Symptoms of stage 3 include confusion and memory loss, as the tau proteins spread to other parts of the brain. Stage 4 is marked by dementia, as nerve cells in the brain die. During the final stages of CTE, the brain withers to roughly half the size of a normal brain. A federal judge has approved a $1 billion settlement between the NFL and thousands of ex-players. The money will go toward medical exams, concussion research, and payment for damages. Man suffers from painful headaches after ejaculation. A 45-year-old man living in Taiwan went to doctors complaining of severe headaches after having sex with his wife. In fact, the man said he'd suffered headaches whenever he ejaculated and had suffered from the symptoms ever since he was 10 years old. The doctor explained that the man suffered from late coital cephalgia, which are headaches caused by ejaculation that can last for hours and up to days. The headache, I mean. The reason, due to the constriction of veins in the man's brain and an increase in blood pressure after sex. The condition can easily be treated with medication that the man will need to remember to take before he starts getting busy with his wife. You also need to avoid strenuous exercise or moving heavy objects as this will also cause an increase in blood pressure. Some men are too embarrassed to seek medical attention and it's estimated that 7% of men with this condition will suffer a stroke if left untreated. Tapeworm removed from California man's brain in emergency surgery. 26-year-old Luis Ortiz has been having terrible headaches since late August and now he knows why. A tapeworm has been living in his brain. One day in early September, Ortiz was skateboarding in Napa when he suddenly experienced the worst headache of his life. He went to his mother's house nearby to rest, extremely disoriented. When he started vomiting, his mother rushed him to the hospital. After doing brain scans, a neurosurgeon told him they'd found a tapeworm, which had formed a cyst that was blocking the flow of water to chambers in his brain. Acting quickly, the surgeon drilled a hole in the skull bone above Ortiz's eyebrow and used a grasping tool to try to fish out the tapeworm. The surgeon managed to pull it off in time the tapeworm still wiggling. Had Ortiz come in even 30 minutes later, he would have been dead. The surgeon says the tapeworm larva had been growing in there for about four years and likely entered Ortiz's body from eating undercooked pork products. Ortiz is back home resting with some memory loss but says he's happy to be alive and that he's stayed far away from pork products ever since. No more bacon strips. Signs and symptoms of eye damage after an eclipse. Americans turned out in droves to watch the solar eclipse, and to the amazement of medical professionals, few have reported eye problems. That being said, CNN reports that Google experienced a spike in search terms like My Eyes Hurt and Eyes Hurt Eclipse following the eclipse. So a horde of eye patients may be upon us. 
Staring directly at the eclipse can cause solar retinopathy, a condition where radiation from the sun is focused through the eyes and burns the retina. Symptoms of this include headaches, watery and painful eyes, sensitivity to bright light, blurry or distorted vision, the occurrence of new blind spots, and a difficulty to differentiate between colors. The harm to vision can be temporary and swelling in the eye may go down, but the damage can be permanent. And naturally, if you think you've got any problems, you should go see a doctor. Nasty ass worm takes four years to burrow through man's brain. This is Spirometra erinus europae, a tiny parasitic tapeworm native to Asia that can infect humans, causing a condition known as sparganosis. Disgusting little creature, isn't it? Drink some dirty water, eat a raw frog, or get too close to your cat or dog, and you too could soon be host to one of these little suckers. Once inside you, our friend, let's call him Spiro, will migrate to the tissue or muscle in your chest, abdominal wall, scrotum, or even your eyes or your brain. Which is exactly what happened to an unnamed patient in the UK, who first visited doctors at St Thomas's Hospital in London in 2008, complaining of headaches, seizures, memory loss, and a change in his sense of smell. An MRI scan turned up a strange lesion on his brain, which was even more baffling as it kept moving. After testing the man for numerous diseases, they eventually discovered the real cause of the man's discomfort, our little tapeworm friend Spiro. Fortunately, once diagnosed, Spiro was quickly killed by a course of drugs and the patient made a full recovery. But don't worry, there have only been 300 cases of the brain turing worm diagnosed worldwide since 1953, and this was the first in the UK. Comforting news now, isn't it? Did you miss a teacher sex story? Visit the nastier nice section on tomonews.net. U.S. diplomats suffer brain injuries after sonic attacks in Cuba. Some U.S. and Canadian diplomats working in Havana have been diagnosed with traumatic brain injury, with likely damage to the central nervous system, after there were suspected attacks directed at their homes by what officials believe were a sonic weapon. It is possible that the device generated infrasound, which is below the range of human hearing. It travels great distances and can easily penetrate most buildings. Low-frequency infrasound can affect the vestibular system, while high-powered infrasound can cause more damage and result in symptoms such as nausea and pressure in the chest. Another type of sound outside the range of human hearing is ultrasound. High-frequency ultrasound can damage blood vessels in the ear canal. However, high-frequency sound dissipates quickly over distance. Therefore, the device must be close enough to its target in order to cause damage. A number of diplomats have ended their assignments in Cuba early because of the attacks. The U.S. State Department has not yet identified a definitive source of the attacks, nor has it found any devices capable of carrying out such an attack. Man wakes up from six-day coma, thinks he's Matthew McConaughey. Rory Curtis, a British footballer from Worcester, who suffered a horrific crash in August 2012 that put him into a six-day coma, is doing well thanks to an experimental drug to treat post-traumatic amnesia, PTA. When Curtis awoke from his coma, he believed he was movie star Matthew McConaughey and was startled to see himself in the mirror because he actually doesn't look like McConaughey. It took Curtis around two months to realize that he wasn't a movie star and for him to stop asking when his next movie would be. Curtis also woke up being able to speak fluent French. One of the nurses at the hospital was from Africa and spoke with him. Interestingly, it's an ability that stayed with him two years later. The brain damage Curtis suffered often left him confused as he would ask his parents if anyone was feeding their pet dog while his parents stayed with him at the hospital. When his mother told him that the pet dog had been dead for years, Curtis sobbed like a child, then suddenly remembered his mother was right. Family and doctors say how lucky it is that Curtis is alive and recovering so well, but doctors also caution that Curtis may need to spend the rest of his life adjusting to and dealing with his unique brain injury. FDA approves the first migraine prevention device. The Food and Drug Administration has authorized the first nerve-stimulating device that can prevent the onset of migraines. The technology reportedly has the ability to stave off migraine pains, which are transmitted by the trigeminal nerve from the scalp to the brain stem. A migraine episode is characterized by painful throbbing in a portion of the head. Symptoms, which also include nausea, vomiting, and heightened sensitivity to light and sound, can last from four hours to as long as three days. The approved device is a headband that emits low-energy electrical currents to the trigeminal nerve via an electrode placed on the forehead. These signals counteract pain signals traveling down the nerve. 
The device maker suggests users suffering from migraines wear the headband for 20 minutes daily. In a clinical trial held in Belgium that involved 67 migraine patients randomly assigned to treatment using the device or to take a placebo, patients using the headband experienced fewer days of migraines each month.